with September being Alopecia Awareness Month, I have the pleasure of interviewing today a classmate of my husband's. Uh, her name is Tanisha Fennell. Hey there, Tanisha. Hi, how are you doing, Yvette? Great. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. And um, so basically the fact that it's Alopecia Awareness Month, actually mm -hmm. Tanisha is the person that made me aware that it was Alopecia Awareness Month. I don't know why I didn't see it anywhere, but mm -hmm. I, you know, going, scrolling through Facebook one day and was, my husband actually saw it first and he was like, hey, did you know this? And I'm like, no, I didn't. But do you think she would be interested in doing an interview? <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. And so, we are. so in my research, I was noticing that it was saying that 23.5 million Americans suffer from autoimmune diseases. And then mm -hmm. of that number, they're saying that 6.9 million in the United States alone suffer from alopecia. But I think part of the the story that they're not telling is that everybody with alopecia doesn't have an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. and I think it's so true. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that there are things like that. And the fact that as I was looking up information about alopecia, I noticed that alopecia areata was like all over the place. That's mm -hmm. all like questions like, what is alopecia areata? How do people get it? who is mm. affected by it. And I'm like, yeah. what about this alopecia in general? And in that, I saw that it, I think it said there are seven different types of alopecia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and alopecia areata is not even the main, like mm -hmm. the most common one. That mm -hmm. one was the androgenic mm -hmm. alopecia, mm -hmm. which is the male pattern baldness. Mm -hmm. And areata is spot baldness. And I'm just yeah. like, why is it that certain ones are getting the spotlight when mm -hmm. there are so many to begin? Why can't we just talk about alopecia? Uh huh. And so to share something with you, I went to the doctor. Um, I had a, a light spot on my forehead mm -hmm. and my hair was thinning in that light spot. And um, because of my health care, mm -hmm. you have to go to your primary before they'll send you to a specialist. So uh -huh. I was doing my due diligence. Mm -hmm. I went to my primary to then be sent to a dermatologist and mm -hmm. um, she didn't want to give me the, oh, the go ahead to go. She's like, oh, you just have alopecia and was just really flipping <laughs> about it. Like, mm -hmm. you have alopecia. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and all I could think about was like, so are you telling me that I'm about to lose all of my hair? I don't understand. Can you give me mm -hmm. more? Exactly. Exactly. So mm -hmm. my uh, father-in-law is a doctor and I kind of told him about the, the interaction and he was mm -hmm. like, oh, doctors, you know, um, mm -hmm. alopecia is the medical term for hair loss. Uh -huh. so any loss of hair is considered mm -hmm. alopecia. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like, well, they've got to know that's a bad idea because mm -hmm. that's kind of like when people say, oh, we, we recommend hospice care. Mm -hmm. Most people, when you think of hospice, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm about to die. I'm dying. Exactly. Know? Exactly. <laughs> so, but then, you know, in, in dealing with that as well, you know, learning more about hospice, I've learned that, oh, well, it doesn't mean that. It just means mm -hmm. that what you have, you can't get cured of, therefore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in long term care. Yes. Simple. But instead, they put it under an umbrella and don't explain anything, and you think you're dying. Right. So my, one of my questions for you is like, so if you don't mind, can you share your story? And mm -hmm. I don't know, did you have any situations like that? Most recently, I went to the dermatologist myself for something totally different. Um, I went because um, across here, pigmentation, I think they call it hyperpigmentation. And I was like, why am I darker up here? I want to go to the dermatologist to see what's going on. So I did that. And while I was there, she you know, recommended a cream. We did all that. And at that time, it was probably mid-April. Mm -hmm. And I had that was the first time I had really gone out in public without my wig, without my weave, I should say, because I never did wigs without my weave. And I didn't have it on at the dermatologist. So it was the prime opportunity for me to say, hey, look at my hair. <laughs> And tell me what's going, what you think is going on. And she said, let me get my glasses. She put her glasses on and she said, 
Oh, you have non-scarring alopecia and your hair probably won't grow back. So do you want me to write this prescription for? So that was all about the alopecia. I'm thinking I'm a woman. I'm sitting in your office. I'm bald as a tick. And all you can do is look at my head and say, oh yeah, it's alopecia, it's non-scarring alopecia. And from what I can tell, just as how she's looking, your hair won't grow back. But um, I'm gonna give you some shampoo. She did give me some shampoo. Probably won't work, but you can, <laughs> but you can use it. And we'll see what it does. And when you come back, we'll, we'll see what it does. And that was that interaction with the dermatologist. Now, early on, after um, my hair really started thinning, I went to a dermatologist and I went to an African-American dermatologist that time, the first time mm -hmm. where, and I think he took a little more time. Um, being a man, he wasn't as compassionate, you know, as, well, you know, he didn't do all that. He kind of looked, these little bumps right here, I'm gonna give you where the blisters are, I'm gonna give you some antibiotics to take that will take care of the infection here. You need to stop getting perms. I stop putting chemicals in your hair, but wherever these bumps are, the hair won't grow back. Um, and then he did list and say, you know, you can get shots in the head, like steroid shots in your scalp, different things. And I honestly just didn't want to do that. I still had hair everywhere at that time. Mm -hmm. It's that little ball, that ball spot with the blisters. And I didn't want to have to keep coming back getting the steroid shots in my head and, and things like that. So that was my interaction. Didn't really go into a lot of detail. And he didn't even, at the time, he didn't even call it alopecia. He didn't name it. He oh. just said, where these blisters are, your hair won't grow back. Didn't give me a name. I kind of researched like hair loss, thin and hair myself back then, found the name alopecia. And again, I ran into what you ran into. I didn't have an autoimmune disease. I wasn't sick. I didn't, so the types of alopecia that I found didn't line up with what was going on with me. Right. So I'm still back then thinking, because that was probably in 1999, 98, 99. So I'm thinking, I don't have alopecia. Something's just wrong. My head. Maybe these perms did it. These chemicals and perms did it at that time. Nobody in my family has alopecia. Nobody in my, at the time, nobody in my family was bald. I mean, didn't have any of those issues. So that was my experience with dermatologists. How did yours, okay. how did yours, um, um, well, you know, as you and I had talked before, and I was in a relationship at, back in the, right in college, right out of my college years, and it was an abusive relationship. And that person happened, he, 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 he jumped on me. And when he did, he snatched me by my hair and slung me. And some of my hair came out right then. And, you know, I kind of noticed you get up, that's my hair on the floor. Some of my hair is on the floor. And it was a little sore, didn't think anything of it. Kind of fast forward, move past that relationship. My hair continued, you know, that of course heals up. It's not sore anymore. Hair starts to grow around that area. You know, it wasn't just completely bald anything. Hair starts to grow around that area continue with my life, hair growing normally. Um, and my son was killed in a car accident in 1993. And the stress of that, I believe, contributed to the other, I mean, it continued, it got worse. Right. Um, and because I, you know, the grief. And at the time, I buried my son Saturday, May 22nd, the next Friday, woke up in a pool of blood and I had a miscarriage. And within a month, I was pregnant again with my 26 year old son. And because of that, when I was pregnant with him, probably three months into the pregnancy, sitting at work, blood just had to go to the back, blood everywhere, thinking I'm about to lose this baby. And I say all that, it ties in because of the stress. Right. I really did not allow myself to grieve my the loss of my son my oldest son in the beginning because i was afraid that if i grieve if i got upset if i cried and cried hard <clears throat> excuse me and all of that i could jeopardize the pregnancy that i was carrying right so what i have come to learn in research stress is going to find a way to escape i mean if you're stressed 
it's going to present itself somewhere. You know, I wasn't a drinker. I didn't smoke, didn't do drugs, didn't do any of this. I'm trying to carry this baby. Still grieving. And there were times I would cry, but I would kind of muffle it. If I really felt myself just really needing to just cry, 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 I would kind of hold it in because it didn't want to affect this baby. And my hair was getting thinner mm. because I was stressing. I was holding that grief in. And, you know, and I have to look back in hindsight and I have to thank God because I could have lost my mind. I, it's a lot that could happen when you right. grieve a child, grieve anyone, but especially grieve a child. So I kind of look at it. I don't make light of this, but for me, if the least thing, if, the, if what I lost was my hair, I'm like, okay, God, you got me. We, we're going to move forward with this. Still not knowing this alopecia, just knowing that my hair is continuing to thin. In that spot, I was continuing to get perms at the time. Um, and whenever I would get the motions perm, I noticed that I would get a fever. I would feel sick and I would feel kind of lightheaded and sluggish. And now thinking back on it, it was because I'm thinking that spot was maybe open, the, you know, I don't, I don't know. So I stopped doing the motions perm, stopped getting perms, period. And fast forward to 2000, my sister says, I have a solution for you. Because at the time, of course, it was easy. I just pulled my hair up in, the, in a ponytail or in a, ball, a ball. But it got to the point that the other hair would start thinning under there. And it started to get hard to pull it all up and make it meet at the top so I can do a ponytail. So my sister told me, I have the perfect solution for you. They're doing this thing called quick weave. I said, okay. Well, let's do that. She showed me some pictures. Let me show you a couple of pictures. Showed me some pictures. And I was like, okay, well, that sounds, sounds good. Started going to this particular beautician. She explained what the quick weave was. It worked. Now just braid your hair that you have. Um, and we will bun, well, sew the cap to the braids. And then we bun the hair to the cap. Okay, sounds good. It looked pretty. But what I didn't realize, the hair on top of that cap is heavy. You know, and as you continue to go on weeks, you sweat, you just naturally oil and sweat, it makes it even heavier. It's pulling on those braids that's braided underneath. But, okay, it's covering up the bald spot. I don't have to go out bald head, so we're good. We, and every time I would go back to the beautician, in the beginning, the bald spot was still there. But when she would take the braids down, my hair was getting longer and longer, where the braids were but that spot was getting bigger and then it got to the point i was like okay this is good it became a security blanket for me so i would go where you probably needed to take off a change the quick weave every two months i kind of prided myself because i could wear it for four months and it still looked good i knew how to maintain it not knowing i was doing myself and my scalp a disservice Wow. because it needed to come off it needed to be washed my scalp needed to breathe needed the, the air the oxygen it needed that and i told i kind of i um compare it to grass if you go out and throw a rug on a spot in your yard and you leave it there for a long time when you go and pull that that rug up that's brown yeah. everything else is green where you covered it is brown because you've killed it right. it's not getting the sunlight it's not getting the air and you've killed it. Same thing with your hair, with your scalp. So where I was for, um, finding a solution for one problem, now you can't see the ball, I was causing more damage. And it got to the point that the longer I would leave it on, especially in between um, reinstallments, when I would go back and she would pull it off, a whole braid would come off with the, with the cap. Whole row of braid, gone whole row of braid gone okay. and it got to the point that I only had hair right here so and was she making you aware that no wow no she wasn't and a couple of times she did it too tight and I had like a tension headache had to go back and she kind of just didn't remove it oh I see where it is clip clip just clip some of my hair right there where it may have been pulling and that was it so i stopped going to her 
And you know, everybody was doing a quick weave then, so I could find different people to go to. Finally found a really good lady. She was really good. She was into um, healthy hair. By this time, I really didn't have much hair to be healthy. <laughs> but um, what I did have, she gave me deep conditioners to my scalp and, and different things like that. She really helped keep my scalp healthy. Mm -hmm. And she finally just asked me, do you want me to just shave cut this on off for the longest I couldn't. I just couldn't let go of it because that one when she that one little piece of hair all the way across here, it was probably down to here. And oh. it really I mean that part grew. It was down to here. And I was just, it took me a while to let it go. And finally I went to her and I said, yeah, just cut it. And she cut it and she was able to still do the quick weave instead of having hair to braid it to you. All you do is you kind of tack it in different places with the bonding glue and then you put it on, make sure it's tacked down. And then when you bond the hair to it, it's on there, it's bonded. And that's what I did. And I did that for 20 years. I was always afraid to do wigs because I was under the impression I did not want to be walking up the street and the wig is back here dangling because it got stuck on something. <laughs> <laughs> we just were not gonna do that like no ma'am I just you know I just didn't have the security I think for people who wear wigs and that's the thing now everybody wears wigs now but most people that wear it you know it's one thing if your wig comes off and you have a head full of hair under there you can kind of shake that off whatever if you want if you don't and that wig dangling back here and you're walking up here and you know you're exposed it's it just wasn't a fit for me Mm -hmm. But the quick weave was, it became my security blanket. I did not take it off until I went to the salon because by this time I'm thinking, what do I have to lose? I'm not killing any more hair. The hair is gone. And this is what I need to make me feel beautiful, to make me feel accepted. I want to deal with the rejection and all of that. And I was married for almost 20 years and my ex-husband never saw this. He saw this when all of you saw this in April. Well, you just saying it, but when my family and friends saw this in April of 2020 during the pandemic is when he saw this. And we got married in 1993 and we wow. divorced in 2013. He never saw it. Because in my mind, and I think that's for women, because we're told and we're taught men are visual. Mm -hmm. And if he sees my, my thinking, if he sees me like that, I won't be attractive to him anymore, you know, things of that nature. So he didn't. Um, I didn't take, I, you know, I didn't, I just didn't let him see it. No one saw it. My mom, my sister, nobody saw it. They saw the spot. My mom and my sister did saw the spot, but the complete, my uncle just called me last, this week to tell me that I've been seeing your pictures on Facebook and you are so beautiful. He said, but what? just gets me is I didn't know. And this is my mama's brother, my uncle. Never, he said, I did not know. I didn't see it. I think with alopecia, what most people don't realize, and you may read about it, the biggest thing with alopecia is the emotional and the sociological, that part of it, especially for women. Now, and I, and I won't say that men don't struggle with that because they may, you know, but it's a little more acceptable if a man decides to cut his hair and he's balling, you know, and that's the first thing we as women, like, girl, he handsome, he, he ball, he tall and bald with a, must, with a goatee or with a beard. Yeah. They can do that. It's accepted. But with women, you know, we are taught a certain look is beautiful. And if you deviate from that, you know, you get the stares or, or that's not beautiful, but that is so untrue. And I have found that out. It took me 20 years to find that out. And I feel so liberated and free now. And I think also with alopecia, because again, mine is traction alopecia. Mm -hmm. And maybe that isn't in the books or they don't talk about it as much because that particular, particular alopecia it affects African American women. Right. Most other races don't have to worry about, not that they don't use extensions, they don't want us to know, but they do too. But um, they are not as prone to the braids and you know things of that nature. So it affects us mostly. 
Um, and I was happy and just over, I won't say happy, inspired to see, I think she's a congressman, Ayanna Presley. Ayanna Presley, yes. Ayanna yes. Presley. She was one of my inspirations in saying, okay, you can do this. But, you know, when I saw her video, it still took me a few months, but I was like, okay, because her story was a lot like mine. She had hair. It was, and she said she was known for the braids and the different looks and things of that nature. And when she finally said, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to embrace this. This is my new normal. She was a big inspiration. And a, a lady that I work with, she's a good friend of mine, Shannon Buff. She's one of our principals out here in the district that I work in. Shannon was in the fight of her life for the past couple of years with a very aggressive breast cancer. Mm. And when she walked into the central office, the board of education where I work, with her head clean, her makeup on and her head up, I was like, okay. And I had to pull her to the side and say, you have given me the courage to do this. It still took me a few months, right. but my thinking was, this woman is in the fight of her life and the least of her worries is that she doesn't have hair. Right. What she wanted to do was see her kids grow up, take her son to college. He was going to be graduated, take him to college. And if hair was the price to pay for that, she was gladly paying that price. And when you put it in perspective for me, not for everybody, for me, when I put it in perspective like that, I was like, okay, God, we got this. And so when I fast forward a little more to the pandemic, we, um, when all of this happened, we were told to shelter in place. I think it was March 16th, so our schools closed, go home, stay in the house. Um, that's what we did April 9th. Um, and leading up to that week, I noticed that I had two little sore spots right in the back of my head down here. And one day I touched it and I had been kind of fooling, like, what is that? And kind of adjusting the cap back there a little bit. But this particular day when I touched it, blood was on my hand. And I immediately knew it's infected. This is a cut, it is infected. And I said, okay, what are you gonna do? And I decided to go to urgent care, but before I went, when I took a shower, um, and when I was getting dressed, I kind of looked in the mirror and I put my hand under it and I was like, God, and I literally, and people, may people, some people may not understand this, but I heard God say, trust me. It's like, okay. <laughs> and I put it, cause she had it on there good. And I got my hand under there and I just started going, on, going around and lifting it. And I was finally able to pull the whole thing out, throw it in the trash can. And my daughter, who's 13, she, looked, she was 12 at the time. She looked at me and she was like, you taking it off? And I was like, yeah, I'm taking it off. God said, trust me. And she and my son had been telling me, because they knew, um, had been telling me for a while, just take it off. You're beautiful, mama. You're beautiful, just do it. And I appreciate that, it helped me a lot. But as you probably know, as a woman, everybody else can tell you you're beautiful until you see it yourself, right. the inner and the outer beauty, until you get it, it really doesn't matter what they say. So she said that, I took it off. I said, I washed my hair off, my scalp off. I said, let's go. Went to the urgent care, found out that it was infected. Um, the young lady told me and gave me antibiotics to take. And she said, I wouldn't suggest putting any, I said, don't worry about it. I'm done with it. I don't wear wigs. She asked, well, I don't wear wigs anyway. And she kind of looked like, you don't wear wigs? <laughs> I said, no, that's why I wear weave. And she was an African-American woman, so she understood. I said, I wear weave. <laughs> that's what caused it, but I'm done. And that was it, April 9th, 2020. And I have not looked back. Um, I have not put anything on, but the pandemic helped me because we were home. I had an opportunity to walk past the mirror and say, who, who is that? <laughs> who is that? Before I went to work and had to be around people because I, the job that I have, I'm all around, always around people. The public, I mean, we have the public coming in and out, parents, board members, um, other school and school employees. And I was very nervous, but I sent, I took a picture and I sent the picture to my superintendent 
um, my immediate supervisor, the chief academic officer, some other people that I know would see me when I was at work because I didn't want them to be startled and at a loss for, word, for words when they saw me. So I was like, let me prepare you now. <laughs> and I sent the picture and explained to my, especially my superintendent, I'm not sick because unfortunately, when people see a woman ball, they automatically assume she's undergoing some sort of chemo. Right. And she's sick and she died. I was like, I'm not sick, praise God. I'm not dying, not today, thank you Jesus. Right. I have alopecia, traction alopecia. God has given me the strength to take the weave off and just embrace me. I am almost 52 years old and at times I say I'm 51 years old and it's time for me to just love me, embrace me the way, just like I am. So that's what I did. And again, that was April 9th. I haven't looked back. I don't have a desire to put the weave back on. I don't have a desire to wear wigs. I think now I'm in that phase of the journey that I'm loving the boldness, the confidence that it has given me, um, the freedom to do things that I told myself, I convinced myself I couldn't do. And that was swim, exercise, jog, walk, do all those things because I didn't want to sweat. I couldn't get wet. Um, you know, in the shower, I have two, three shower caps on and some else tied around it to make sure the hair didn't get wet. Now I stand in the shower like, yes. yes God. <laughs> <laughs> is this what I've been missing for 20 years for real? You know, a few, I think it was around July, I went to my sister's house, got in the pool for the first time in 20 years. And I saw the joy on my daughter's face because she always got in, but mommy couldn't get in with her. You know, I gave an excuse, mommy can't get in. I hopped over in that water and it was just, thank you, Jesus. Oh I can't God. wait to go to the beach I, um, I, I walk now and I started walking, um, right around April when we, yeah, when we did the sheltering in place, I walked two to three miles a day. I usually try to do it a day. Sometimes I'll, I may get in, um, four or five days a week, but I can do it now. And when I sweat, I'm like, yes, I can sweat. I can sweat, you know? And uh, my sister's like, you're just sweating. And I feel like I haven't walked enough to I'm sweating because I can do it now. And it, it holds you in such bondage when you are depending on that as a security blanket. It, keep, it holds you back from being who you are and who God has created you to be. And now I'm tapping into all of that. And, you know, and even with dating and things like that in the past, you always want, and I really didn't tell people, but you kind of wonder, when do I tell them? Um, that I, I'm bald or have alopecia. Um, I don't have to worry about that now. You see, it. what you see is what you get. Right. And I understand that just like everybody had, we have what we like. We like what you, you like, what you like. Some people like tall, short, skinny, thick, bald hair. It doesn't matter. I get that. So if this isn't what you like, be respectful, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Eventually, Somebody will, but most importantly, I do. I love me. I love me like this. I love, again, not to repeat myself, but I love the boldness and confidence that I have. And not, but I have to tell you, not every day is like, every day I, I love the boldness and confidence, but there are some days you get to the store and you're like, do I want to go in this store? Am I going to run into somebody who hasn't seen it yet? Um, those days are far and few in between now. Mm -hmm. um, I really have gotten better with it now. You know, some people, most of the time I found that some of that stuff was in my head. I think because people are doing so much of their own thing now, you see people come in with green hair, blue hair, pink hair, <laughs> shaved on one side, hair on the, you know, people, and we're so, we're different. And now, thank God, maybe people are embracing our uniqueness and the diversity now that you don't really get people staring at you. Some of that was in my head. I'm thinking, everybody's looking at me and those people are like, lady, move out the way. We try, I'm trying to get where I'm, you know, do what I'm doing, get where I'm going. So I've gotten much better with that.
That is an amazing story. You got me here in tears. Like <laughs> talking about how your daughter is like, you know, my daughter and my son and happy mm -hmm. and wow, wow. You know, wow. And I have to give my ex husband credit. I, I, I believe in giving credit where credit is due. When he saw it, he said, You are absolutely beautiful. That you are beautiful. Um, you know, and I just, he said, you know, I'm so glad you have the boldness and the confidence now to go out and just be you. And I'm so glad that you see what I've always seen. And that is that you are a beautiful woman. And, you know, and I never thought I wasn't beautiful, but I didn't accept me just the way I am. I felt like I had to add and do this and do that, you know, and I don't. I, I don't I don't have to but you know I just I know that everybody's journey is different it took me 20 years to get here but what I will say to anybody who may um, happen upon this video you didn't happen upon it by accident you know God is saying to you be you be who you are embrace who you are just the way you are Take your time because everybody's journey is different, but eventually you got to get up and pull yourself up by the bootstraps, dust yourself off and say, okay, uh, we got this and it will be all right. It really will be, it will be all right. And, and I am so thankful because I didn't realize, I've heard people say, this isn't my saying, I've heard the saying, you don't know how strong you are to so all, the only option you have is to be strong. And that is very true. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could go to work and I could go to church and I can go to the mall and go all out and about with a bald head and hold my head up high and feel beautiful. But I do. I really do. Well, Tanisha, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. I'm literally here just <laughs> really holding it together. Um, well, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it because I have to tell you too, and this thing, hopefully my internet is, is good. I got a little message up there, but I asked God when I decided, when he said, trust me, and I decided to do this, I asked him to give me a platform that I could tell my story and that hopefully I can inspire other people, whether it's alopecia or you, whatever people may be going through, that my story would inspire somebody, would inspire somebody to love themselves, to trust God, to take that first baby step. And don't worry about the rest of the stairs, just take that first step. It will be okay. I promise you it will be okay. I didn't have a choice in this, you know, and I think that's a big difference. Some women have a choice and they're going to do the big chop. But when the choice is taken away from you and you're just like, boom, this is your new normal, it's a different dynamic. You know, it's, it's different because when you decide to take that child, then you're ready to step out there. I did this, here I am. But when the choice is taken away, it, like I said, plays with your psyche, it can play with your emotions. But if we just remember, we are not our hair as women. You are not your hair. You're so much more than that. You're that beautiful spirit that's on the inside of this flesh body. Because over time, this will change. Hair or no hair, this is gonna change. But if you're beautiful in here, and God's light and spirit lives in here, this can't help but be beautiful. That beauty comes up and out. And that's my goal, to be that light, to be an atmosphere changer to change the room when I walk in it. And I want God, people to see God in me before they even see me, see the God in me. And that's what this is giving me the opportunity and the blessed, blessed opportunity to do, to walk in this new normal and to know that if God allows this, it's a purpose for it. it, it I believe that with all my heart, it's a purpose for it. And I am single and I believe that now that I have uncovered, my husband can find me because the real Tanisia was hiding behind weave and excuses. But this is me. 
and I'm ready for everything that God has for me. I am ready for it. Wow.